morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath to everyone. Thank you all for coming. Our visitors here today, thank you for coming. Thank you for making Lake Wills your place of worship today. We know we had a choice. And we thank you for choosing Lake Wills Seventh-day Adventist Church. We invite you as well to have a fellowship meal with us afterwards. And uh, so we can get to know a little bit more about you as you get to know a little bit more about us and as we fellowship together, being friends and being children of God. So we thank you for coming here today. A few announcements. We're asking that you remember our VBS week. It's the last week of June and our VBS sponsorship. It's sponsor a child and it's $10 per child. Now with that $10, it seems just as a small amount. But in the hands of God, that's a mighty number. Amen? He can use that amount, and he will use that amount to bring one little child unto him. So he asks that you just sponsor a child for just the amount of $10. Um, our midweek Bible study continues on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. And as we just mentioned, the SOL match, $2 for $1 donated, Sister Carter just brought to my attention that, you know, maybe we could just have pledges. So as the Lord leads you, you know, we're asking that, you know, you can come forward with your pledges, you know, whatever it may be, however small or however large, you know, if it's 25 cents, you know, of course, with that 25 cents, we're going to get 50. So that puts, a, puts us at 75 and that's a large number for God. So please, you know, with your, um, with your pledges, just come forward and, you know, we can, um, we can write down those pledges and, and, you know, it will be a reminder as well. We can remind you of those pledges. And it's just for this month and it's up to $300. So whatever um, amount the church donates to the ministry, the donor will, um, will pledge $2 for that $1. Amen. And remember, in the um, building committee, we have an ongoing donation as well of $1 per day per person. So it works out to $30 per family if you want to do it per family or however way you want to do it. If you want to do it per family or if you can afford per person in the household, it's up to you. But we're asking just for $1 per day per family. And that, that number multiplies. If, if you work it out, I think it came out to something like $30,000 a year. That's a large number from where we are now. And in hands of God, of course, you know, he multiplies. So, you know, let, let us just keep these little things and little pledges in mind as we go forward. Um, oh, remember, or, oh, um, Outreach, not tomorrow, but next Sunday. And here in, in the bulletin, it says um, volunteers by 11 o'clock. No, let's come. We, we've moved it from um, one, 1 to 4 to 2 to 4. So if we're here by, by 1 o'clock, that gives us enough time you know, for us to start packing, packing um, some boxes and doing you know, whatever we should do. So 1 o'clock is early enough. Um, 11 o'clock is definitely too early. And that was when we were doing some of the preliminary stuff on the morning off. But now we've started doing it, you know, um, after Sabbath closes. So, you know, it eliminates us getting up early and stuff. Because, you know, I know most of us work, and then the Sabbath, Sunday is really our own only day. So, you know, of course, we want to spend a little bit of time at home and, and you know, with, with the family and stuff. So 1 o'clock is good for us to get here. I think that's um, all the announcements, unless anyone else has any announcements. All right, may we allow the Lord to prepare our hearts as we go forward today. Our speaker will be Brother John Dominguez. Our scripture will be read by Brother Al. And our children's story will be by Sister Annie. And our special music by the congregation, I think you're going to pick one. 373 will be our, um, 373. Which, which, uh, which song is that? Rosie. What's the name of the song? 
Oh, Seeking the Lost. Okay, and three seven threes. Seeking the Lost will be our, our special music, and we all we all get to participate. <laughs> One of those days. Yeah, that, that's a powerful song. All right. So. Um, Please stand. Yes. For our worship invitation, it's in your hymnal six six two, but it's also in the, your bulletin. Let all mortal flesh keep silence and with fear and trembling stand. Ponder nothing earthly minded, for with blessing in his hand, Christ our God to earth descends. Let us bow our heads for prayer. Dear kind Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. We want to thank you so much for waking us up this morning and bringing us here for another day of life, another breath, for our eyes to open and see the sunshine. We thank you so much, Lord. We ask now that your Holy Spirit is present, Lord. And if our hearts are stones, turn them into hearts of flesh. Help us to be like you. Help us to learn your ways, Lord. We already know the ways of the world, and we don't need that in our lives anymore. So we ask and pray that you fill us with your presence. May we reflect your godliness, Lord. May we be your, truly your sons and your daughters. We ask for you to be with us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Our hymn of praise is number 290, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus.
Amen. As far as it's possible, could we please kneel for a morning prayer? <clears throat> oh, Father, who art in heaven. Father, we are thanking you for your son, Jesus, and thanking you for the opportunity and the privilege of grace and mercy for us to turn our eyes upon him. Thank you, Lord, for his life, his death, his resurrection, his ascension, and his intercession for us now. And thank you, Lord, for the promise he made that he will come again. And we know he was faithful in all his promises before, and surely he is faithful in this one. So we thank you and we praise you. And we thank you, Father, that as we've woken up this morning, it's one more day closer to his coming, one more day closer to that promise. And Father, we are thanking you for that day when there will be no more sin, no more pain, no more death, no more accidents, no more trials. Father, we are thanking you for your son this morning. And Father, as he said, and I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Father in heaven, that is our prayer this morning, that your son be lifted up and that he will draw us unto him. Thank you, Lord, that in all our brokenness, in all our trials, in all our cares, our fears, our challenges of this world, we truly have a place where we can come and we can rest, and that place is on your bosom. And Lord, we are here today asking that you will just encircle us with your arms, with your robe of righteousness, because, Lord, in our stupor, we failed you. In our stupor, we've sinned. So please forgive us for all our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Renew and restore us to your image and to your likeness, O oh Father, we ask and pray. And Lord, many have traveled and are here again with us, and we thank you for traveling mercies. Many are on the road today. Lord, wherever they are, whatever mode of transportation, lands your ear, we're asking that your Holy Spirit will be the engineer and will be the pilot or the driver or the leader in all things. And may you guide them and direct them. And even those who are not yet of your fold, who are out there in the world and doing their thing, Lord, in that too we know that there is grace extended and expended to man. So please be with them, O oh God, we pray. Many of us have families who are not yet of your fold. Father, we know we pray unto you, and this time we come again with humble hearts, asking that you will touch their hearts. Continue to be with them in all that they do. In everything, Lord, be with them, even when they're doing the wrong. Be with them, O oh God, and be God to them still, and guide their hearts unto your bosom. We too were of the world, and you've guided us here. So, Lord, your God, same God yesterday, today, and forever, and you still have that convincing and convicting power. And we ask that you will use it in their behalf today, we pray. And Father, as, as Brother John opens the word of life to us today, we know that we are many here, and it's one sermon. It's only by the convicting and convincing power of your Holy Spirit that every man can hear it in the language of his own souls. So we are asking you to be in control and for you to speak. May it not be man, but may, it only be a may he be a vessel, and may you speak. And may the words of life be broken clear that even my babe can understand today, we pray. Thank you for your blessings and thank you for your faithfulness. And in all things, O oh Lord, we thank you for being God unto us today, we pray. We love you, we trust you, and we thank you. And we ask these things in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. the time again we all can partake. It's our tithes and offering time. 
And this week, the offering goes to our local church. There's a question, and the question is, would you hesitate to ask? There was a room full of doctors eating together on a certain occasion. One doctor got up from the table, left the room, and in minutes, he was dead. A morsel of food had lodged in his windpipe, and so he choked to death. The tragedy of this incident is heightened by the fact that probably any one of those doctors could have performed the Heimlich maneuver, or if need be, a tracheotomy to restore his breathing. But they did not know anything was wrong. He didn't tell them. A lesson is here for those of us in the church. A member may have a problem in his or her life, a problem with marriage or the children, with alcohol, money, grief, loneliness, depression, or whatever. He feels embarrassed about the situation, so he does not tell his brothers or sisters in Christ that he is struggling. Instead, he absences himself or puts on a brave front and struggles all alone. Sometimes he is crushed beneath the load and no one knew until it was too late. The scripture says, bear one another's burdens and thus fulfill the law of Christ, Galatians 6.2. That is one big reason why Christ in his mission placed himself together in the church to bear one another's burdens. Of course, many problems cannot be solved as quickly as that of a choking victim, but most problems become more bearable when shared. Most problems become more bearable when shared. Our local church provides, among other things, help for our members in need as well as those in the community. I encourage you to give faithfully today. Mary Deacons, please come forward. Hmm. It's so true. Many times we come to church and we say happy Sabbath and we get the response. But we don't know the burdens that many are carrying. May we have a word of prayer. Loving Father in heaven, Thank you, God, for your blessings and your kindness. Thank you, Father, for granting unto us that which is yours for us to further your gospel. And, Father, you've asked back for just 10%, and you've given us 90%. And here you've asked as well for a faithful offering so that your work here locally and internationally can go forth to reach those who are most in need. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings and your faithfulness. Thank you for expending and extending unto us this privilege. And Lord, we ask that you will receive what is rightfully yours, and may you bless it, and may your work continue. We ask that your Holy Spirit will go with that is, which is collected, that many hearts and lives will be changed, of which we can only know in eternity. We thank you, Lord, for this blessing, and we praise you now in Jesus' name. Amen.
Morning. <laughs> Where are the children? <laughs> Come and help me out up there. <laughs> the Lord. Thank you. Good morning. How are you? Happy Sabbath. <laughs> okay, our story today is coming from a book. It's called In the Shadow of the Mob. And it's this young boy who his dad was in the mob and he took drugs and all of that. And um, one day he decided that being on, he was on the court, basketball court, and a voice told him that everything would be all right. And um, eventually he gave his life to Christ. But this is an experience he had when he was, he, has, he had just begun to work. So I'm gonna be reading for you. So, um, so this is when he was at his desk and um, he was being teased by his co-workers. So it started, don't tell me that you actually believe in that stuff, um, said Ben, one of Carl's fellow uh, lab workers, as he thumped on Carl's Bible and laughed. Look, everybody, Carl still believes in fairy tales. Do you believe in Santa? And uh, the Easter Bunny, too. Carl decided, Carl sighed, and tried to concentrate on his work. It was bad enough that he was swamped with difficult work, but to have his fellow workers make fun of him all the time for his Christian belief was really getting on his nerves. Most of the people had, um, had he worked with came from prestigious schools and had wealthy families and they felt they were too uh, smart to believe in God. God, did you put me here to show me where I shouldn't be? Um, Carl, Carl griped uh, silently, thank you. <laughs> I'm sick of this. Nobody here cares anything about you, and all they do is make fun of me. What am I doing here? The old Carl would have gotten in their faces. Christian Carl, but um, Christian Carl bit his tongue and tried to let his work and his positive attitude be the example. Carl. Carl looked up from his work to see his supervisor walking in his direction. Yes, he answered. I have a project for you, his supervisor said, dropping a thick stack of paper in front of him. I'm not going to lie. This is t a tough one. I'm probably um, resume, um, consume you for about six weeks if you are to top, if you are on top of it, but I think you can handle it. Uh, when Carl examined the project, he felt overwhelmed. Oh God, Carl prayed again. You put me here. I can't figure it out, but you can. You're the, on, you're the one who gave me these skills in the first place and you are the one um, who has creativity. I need you. Anybody can have wisdom that comes from a textbook, but I need the wisdom that comes from you. Please give me your wisdom and your spirit. Before he, st um, I'm sorry. Before he started on the project, Carl picked up the, book, the Bible. Ignoring the jokes from the fellow workers, he read the book of Ecclesiastes and soaked in the words about, about wisdom. Then he went to work. 
As he immersed himself into the project, he found, surprisingly, it, it all made sense. Complex calculations and solutions seemed to come out of nowhere, and he worked to finish the project. To, to his own amazement, he finished it in, in a few days. When he walked into his supervisor's office with the completed project, his supervisor stared at him in, in abject, in apparent disbelief. You're done? Are you kidding me? It's all there, Carl said. Finished. Carl, can you show me how you did this? His supervisor asked. Um, Carl nodded. Wait, his supervisor said. Got, um, his, super, his supervisor got up from his chair and walked to the office door. Everybody, stop what you're doing and come in here. Carl just finished a six-week project in a few days. I've asked him to show me how he did it, and I think I would be uh, beneficial for everybody uh, to listening. Um, first, I want to start by saying congratulations to Carl, his supervisor said. Because you've turned in the project around in so quickly, I'm going to reward you. This incredible completion just carried, um, just earned you a week, a one week paid vacation. Wow, thank you, Carl said. And while everyone um, clapped, can't take it, can I take it starting today? He said yes. You can leave if you want to, but the supervisor said, um, not before you explain how you did it. Well, Carl said, see this book over there? He pointed to the Bible. That's my only secret. Anybody can obtain knowledge, but wisdom comes from God. God is the same one who gave me the wisdom to complete the project so quickly. Carl's supervisor looked at him in stunned silence. <laughs> Someone called out, did the others join, um, God did your project for you? Someone called out. And then the others joined in with the jokes. Laugh all you want, Carl said to his peers, but that's how the project got finished. With all due respect, sir, can I leave now? So, um, that's the end of the story. I won't go any further. <laughs> but um, w there's wisdom that comes from God, and um, his word never returns to him void. And so that is my prayer, that um, we'll take him at his word, and that we benefit. He is um, exposed as a God who can do all for us. So does anybody want to pray? <laughs> I'm not going to pick on you again. Um, loving Father, we're just so grateful for your love and your kindness. Your wisdom come from your word, and it never returns to you void. Um, we just give you thanks and praise, Lord Jesus, knowing that you will never abandon us nor forsake us, but you will show that you are a paramount in all that we do and say. We pray with thanksgiving in the name of Jesus and through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Our scripture reading this morning is Isaiah 8.20, and I'm reading from the Amplified Version of the Bible. To the teaching and to the testimony, if their teachings are not in accord with this word, it is surely because there is no dawn and no morning for them. Now comes the time when everybody can participate. We're going to be doing number 373 for our special music, Seeking the Lost. And when we come to the refrain, the men are going to start first, and then the women will, will follow. So I'm counting on the deep voices to make it go well. All right. Seeking the Lost, number 373. Seeking the lost is kindly entreating wanderers on the mountain astray. Come unto me, his message repeating words of the master speaking today. better as we got along. Thank you.
Am I on? Oh, I am off. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Praise the Lord. I am so blessed to deliver to you today's message. Amen? All right. I'm going to have a brief prayer before I start because I think that's important. I need uh, uh, the Holy Spirit to go ahead and influence me as I uh, preach today and as I show you this presentation. So if you'll allow me, if you could bow your heads, I'm going to kneel. Okay? Almighty Father God, thank you so much. What a privilege it is to stand before you and to preach and to give a message of truth and hope. Please, Lord, let things be clear and concise as your word says. Not my words, but yours, Lord. Let me reflect your character, your love, but let me also give the sense of urgency. Hear my prayer, Lord. Help me to be like you. I thank you, Lord, for everything. You're my one and only, and I love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. What a powerful, um, this is so neat. I don't have to look on the side. Church I preached this at, uh, they, they didn't have this thing, so I had to constantly look like this. So this is really, really neat. Um, I just hope, let me turn this on. Okay. Do I point it here or do I point it at you? Oh, I pointed it at you. Okay. So I'm gunning for you. Okay. Um, yeah, let me uh, go ahead and read the, uh, the scripture reading again. Um, it's powerful. I say 820. That one, that one verse, to the law and to the testimony, if they, if they do not speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. That's a powerful statement. Don't you think that's powerful? Yes, yes. I'm so glad you're here today, and I pray that the message that you hear today, you can take with you, and that you could share with someone. I do pray that if, if there were more people here, that would have been wonderful, but you know what? I'm blessed to have you here, because you know what? You're going to go out into the world, amen? Oh, praise the Lord. Okay, so I have a question to ask you. I have a couple questions. How many of you here are Christian? Raise your hand. What are you, Christian? Raise your hand. All right, praise the Lord. That's good. That's good. You sure? Are you positive? Oh, someone's probably saying, this is a loaded question. He's getting at something, isn't he? No, no, I just, I just want to know. Okay, so let me ask you another question. How many of you believe that this is the inspired word of God? Yeah, let me say a show of hands. You, you, you truly believe this, right? Everybody. Okay, remember, remember what you've just stated. Remember what you've just stated. You just affirmed by raising your hand that this is the inspired word of God. So that means you believe what it says. Amen? You know, I find it really interesting. Um, it's so interesting. The Sabbath school this morning, we were talking about a particular emotion. We were talking about anger. Hmm. Lots of emotions. We have lots of, of feelings. We like to feel a certain way. We, we like to, you know, if someone says something, well, I was just, I felt that. That's the first thing that they say. Do you notice that? I just felt that I was wrong because. Interesting. Very interesting, these emotions. When we delve into the Bible, okay, The Bible asks us particular to do to, to be of a particular mind. Let's see if I get this if I got this first slide right. Let me see. I might be jumping ahead of myself. Okay, so what the Bible says, this is from the New King James Verse, Titus 2, 6 and 8. Likewise, exhort the young men to be of what mind? Sober in all things, showing uh, yourself to be a pattern of good works in doctrine, showing integrity, reverence, incorruptibility, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that one who is an opponent may be ashamed, having nothing evil to say to you. So the operative word here, be of sober mind. 
So let me ask you the question. If you are not of sober mind, then what are you? What's the opposite of sober-minded? Drunk. We, at times, allow for our emotions, okay, to overwhelm us. Anger, when that guy cuts you off, right? Or when that person's behind in Walmart hitting the back of your foot, you know? Or in Walmart when there's like 500 registers and there's only three lines open, you start getting irritated. Our emotions just start to well up. Emotions are powerful. God made us to have emotions. But we are to be stewards of our emotions. Amen? We are to watch our emotions. We can't let them override us. I'll give you an example. Just this week, when I was at work, um, I was driving with a, a gentleman. I was sitting there at my job, and he was driving uh, this, this truck. This truck. And I was sitting next to him, and I just started there. I probably won't stay there. <laughs> I'll go someplace else. But in any case, he says to me, so, have you seen that movie, The Avengers? And I looked at him and I said, no. You haven't? I said, no. And I just wanted to cut to the chase and I said, no, I'm boring. And he says, what do you mean you're boring? He said, I'm boring. I don't, I don't go to movies. I don't watch TV. I, I don't watch. Oh, that's not true. I watch a little bit of news. I see how maniacal the world is getting. I said, okay, an hour's enough. And that's about it. I'm not the guy you want to sit with to watch Little House on the Prairie. Because I said, oh, this is very nice. Oh, but, but they shouldn't do that because the Bible says this. They shouldn't do that. You know, I'm not that guy. I don't even listen to the music. So I just wanted to cut to the chase and say, listen, you're going to find me a boring person. And he asked me, what do you do? Oh, well, I said, read my Bible. I read literature. I go out in nature. I exercise, eat right, and I take my Geritol, you know. <laughs> Only some of you that are a little older can understand what Geritol is. You know, I think they still have that, by the way. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> but the point is, is that... Um, I wanted to convey to him that this is, this is my lifestyle. This is what I mean. You're, you're going to ask me questions that I don't have answers to because I, I, I don't partake and I haven't done. So he was cool with that. He was all right with it. He says, oh, okay. I'm okay with that. He was a very nice gentleman. However, the other day, it was yesterday, another gentleman was walking, and he asked me, uh, you know, hey, you know, I wish we had something to drink. It's so hot, you know, maybe a Corona. And I said... <laughs> I said, yeah, I don't drink. And he says, what do you mean you don't drink? I, said, I don't drink. <laughs> I drink water. <laughs> That's what I drink. So he said, you know what? I'll tell you what. And all of a sudden, his demeanor changed, and you see these emotions stirred. And one of the emotions, and the emotions came up, and he, he became almost defiant in a way, and he said, I'll tell you what. When I'm 70 and you're 70, he didn't know how old I was. Uh, God bless him. God bless him. He said, when we're both, when I'm 70 and you're 70, at least I could say when I die, I live my life the way I wanted to. And in my mind, I was said to myself, oh my, Satan said the same thing. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to set myself above the throne of God. So I said, obviously this man is intoxicated with emotion. So I said, son... I said, I've lived your lifetime like 500 times. I've done everything you've done. Oh, no, but I'm going to live better. I'm going to live better. Okay. And I just kind of walked away at that point. Anyway, the, uh, uh, the, the co-supervisor with me, I think, pulled him aside because I came back from the restroom. I was fine. He came running to me, and the young man st st stuck his hand out. And he said, sir, I just wanted to let you know I was just fooling with you. I was just kidding, you know. It was just a joke. I, I didn't mind. I was like, Okay, listen, it's fine. You could think what you want to think, but I'm telling you, I've already done all this stuff. I've done it. So I know, I know, I'm, I'm just joking with, joking with you. So I looked at the supervisor, and he looked at me, and he said, uh, when that young man left, he said, I told him about you. I told him you were a man of God. I was like, well, well, thank you. Praise God. I told him that you're a holy man. <laughs> I said, well, thank you. Which, which is not far off. We're supposed to be a holy people, right? A people set apart. That's what holy is. 
when you follow what the Bible says, when you follow what Scripture says, you become holy. And you're set apart. It's a people set apart. So sober-minded is when we get all these emotions. Uh, let's take a look at another Scripture. Um, uh, but the end of all things is at hand. Be ye, therefore, sober and watch unto prayer. King James Version, 1 Peter 4, 7. Be sober. Again, what I'm going to ask you today is to be sober-minded. Okay? Stay with me and be sober-minded. Let's look at another scripture. Hold on one second. Here we go. I've got to thank uh, my wife for the nice transitions that she gives me there. It says, Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober. Be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Sober. If you're not sober-minded, you're intoxicated with something. And that intoxication is our feelings. Okay? Let me see if I have something else here to go ahead and... and um, I think I have another scripture here. Or do I? No. Okay, so let's talk about... Okay. Where the emotions come from. There are several parts of your brain. Okay? You see that big one that says logic? Everyone see that? That's the one we're going to use. Okay? That's known as the frontal lobe or the prefrontal cortex. Right here, the frontal lobe. This is what we're going to use. So all my medical students, don't answer because you're cheating. Okay? All right, so the emotions come from a particular area of the brain known as the limbic system. Now, if you read, the limbic system works with other areas of the brain in, a com in complex ways. The word that best describes what the limbic system controls would be what? Emotions. Emotions. What we're going to talk about today as we hit the ground running is our emotions on a particular topic that in our church likes to be skirted around. We can't. We can't do that. Because the Lord told me and instructed me to preach the truth. Amen? Do you want me to lie to you? Ask me. Do you want me to lie to you? Well, that's a loaded question because I wouldn't lie to you anyway. So I'm not about to lie to you. I'm going to tell you the truth of what the Bible says. I'm not saying it. Who's saying it? The Bible's saying it. So the limbic system um, controls that part of the brain. And second, uh, uh, secondly, um, a part of the limbic system called the hippocampus helps us form and retain memories. So emotions and memories are connected. Okay? You ever think of something that brought you back to somewhere and you said, oh, yeah, that was just so nice. Oh, wow, that was really wonderful. Or you think about something, say, that was terrible never going to do that again, or I'm never going to go over there. I, I don't know what was... So emotions uh, can overwhelm us, and, and I hate to bring in... Years ago when I used to watch movies, there was one particular line that a movie that I had seen, and I hate to bring that in, but, but it made sense, and it's so true. It, it's, uh, it was Star Wars. It was when Obi-Wan Kenobi told Anakin Skywalker, he said, Anakin, be mindful of your feelings, for your feelings betray you. Your feelings can betray you. Want to know how? Thank you. I'll tell you how. When you think you're in love and you're young, and you see that person, that, that, that woman, or that, that young lady, or that young man, and you're, like, and you're dating, and everything's just so wonderful, isn't it? Oh, they're perfect. No, no, there's nothing wrong with him, Mom. There's nothing wrong with him. He's good. No, there's nothing wrong with him. I, but, but I love him so much. He loves me. And the same thing for, you know, for, for, the man, for, for the man. Oh, I love her so much. It's just, she's beautiful. She's like a princess. And you're on your best behavior, and they see all. Then you get married. And you're like, oh, I didn't know you did that. You did that? Wow. 
I didn't know that. Oh, okay. Our emotions can overwhelm us and lead us blind. We're not to lead by emotions, but we're to lead by, let me see if I have it here. Dun, dun, beautiful. The higher level of thinking, which is the frontal lobe. Here it is. Higher level thinking is supported by the frontal lobes. Activity in these lobes allows us to reason, make judgments, make plans for the near and far future, make choices, take action, solve problems, and generally control our living environment. Without fully functioning frontal lobes, you may have intelligence, but you wouldn't be able to put it to use. The frontal lobe. This is what we're going to use today while we talk about our particular topic, okay? When you start feeling that limbic system come in, you can go like this, type yourself, say stop. Or you can go take it aside, put it aside, because we need to talk. We need to have as a family, as a church family, and as you, my people, we are one. We are, you are my people, right? Amen? Amen. You are my people. We need to have the discussion. Sometimes discussions can become a little icky, right? You ever try and talk to somebody about a particular topic and go, how do I? But you do it because it needs to get done. You need to talk about it. You can't hide it. You can't, you, you just can't. Uh, let's see, I'll, I'll go to the next one. Okay, oh, here's something that Sister White says in Maranatha, page 55. Alas, that so many have only a spasmodic religion, a religion depending upon what? Feeling and governed by what? Emotions. Friends, I've done a lot of things in my lifetime. Some things I'm not proud of. I've done tons of things. I've been to a whole bunch of other churches. I'm being honest. In Southern California, I've been to church on the way, been there, you know, done it, did it, went to their, went to their church party. I said, okay, what's the church party like? They were thumping music, and they were doing all sorts of things. I was like, this, 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 this is, this is, a, this is how, this is how they roll. This is how, whoa. Now, so the, 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 uh, was a, a Sunday keeping church. Good people, though. Beautiful people, wonderful people. But where were they? They were listening to all this sorts of music, and, 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 and I'm coming into this. And I thought it was a regular, because I came out from the world, okay? I came out from the world where you had house parties. When you had house parties, you go inside, all you hear is, umph, 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 umph. and that's what you go into. And you've got your little red cups, and you're knocking them back. Please give me a break. I've done it all. So I go and see this, and I'm saying, oh, boy. And they're all dancing or whatever and doing all this stuff. This Christian party. I had to find a bathroom, so I went upstairs to one of the rooms, opened the doors, and there's a young man and a young girl in the bed. Had the covers. I came inside. They said, we're not doing anything. We're just laying here. Uh, okay. I just looking for the restroom. <laughs> yeah. Feelings and emotions. That, that whole music thing with the beats and all stuff like that, uh, you know, I've, I've got to tell you, it's the wrong musical bed. The vehicle mismatched the message. I know some people have a hard time with that. I don't allow my kids to listen to Z88. Why? Because it's the same thing. It's the same oops, oops, oops that you're hearing there. It's the same oops, oops that you're hearing there. The only things are the words are different. It's the words. I'm not judging the singers. They might have a wonderful heart. I'm not judging them. But the vehicle must match the message. Think about that. That polyrhythmic element puts your mind, and you don't know this, you should know this, you should learn this, in an alpha state. Alpha state makes you more open to things around you, susceptible. That's why when I used to go clubbing, I used to go to Manhattan to the limelight, and I used to go clubbing, okay, and the women are there, you know, and, 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 and I'm there, and, and, and we're, you know, we're dancing or whatever, and I'm like, oh, we're just going to dance, we're just going to dance. No, you're not. Let's be real. Because if you're going there to dance and you see some young lady or you see some guy, you're like, hey, how you doing? You know that. Come on. 
Emotions. Topics, and I don't know how we got on this particular topic, but we did, and we ventured there. And it was a whole group of us. It was a, it was a pretty big church. It was a whole group of us. And there was a woman sitting behind me, uh, just kind of diagonally here. And again, I don't know how we got into the conversation, but the conversation, you know how Sabbath schools go, <laughs> it kind of led, went that way. And I made this statement because someone had made a statement that we stand in solidarity, okay, and this is where I'm going to have to ask you to take that limbic system, put it aside, and to think soberly and to hear it out. This will be seasoned with grace, but you must listen. There's a difference between hearing and listening, okay? You are to listen. You with me? You following with me? Okay. So I said, we do not stand in solidarity, as one church leader put it, with LGBTQ. That's not right. The Bible doesn't say that. I said, I'm sorry. But this is not what the Bible says. If we believe truly what the Bible says, we go by what, what the Bible says. That would be like me saying, I stand in solidarity with the murderer. I stand in solidarity with the pedophile. I stand in solidarity with bestiality. I stand in solidarity for all sexual and moral things. No, we don't stand in solidarity with them. In the name of Jesus, we do not. But to say that this is okay is not right. It's not what the Bible teaches us. The Bible teaches us that, well, it was man and woman were made to procreate. Amen? That's what we're supposed to do. Now, when I made this comment and I said my particular statement, my other statement was, however, my sin is no greater than their sin. But that person did not hear that because they automatically put up a block. And I saw it on her face. The limbic system kicked right in. We love to lead by the limbic. I saw this. I said, ooh, she's looking pretty upset right now. And she didn't say anything. I took a deep breath. I said, okay. But I still said, she did not hear the rest of my comment. Did you hear the rest of my comment? What did I say? That's right. My sin is no greater than their sin. It's not greater. Sin is sin in the sight of God. Anyway, Sabbath school was over. Church went on. I sat there. I was about to walk on. And the, the, the young woman said, excuse me. I have to speak to you. And I said, all right, Lord, here it goes. I sat down and listened to the woman. And she said, I don't know your heart. I don't know how, how, how you are. And in my mind, I'm saying, you don't know how I am. You don't know my heart. Only the Lord knows my heart. And she, had, she started beginning to tell me a story. She says, you know, I have a stepdaughter. And she is LBGT. I said, Okay. Okay, she said, and when I first saw her, I was disgusted by her. And in my mind, I said, well, that was the first problem. Thinking yourself superior. Okay, we're not superior than anyone else because we're all riddled with sin. It clings to us. And it, it's like a sticky sludge. You want to get it off. It's like, get it, get it away from me. We're all riddled with sin but we have Jesus' blood to cover us, amen? We get inoculated every day with the blood of Christ, amen? His blood covers us. Who was found worthy? None, yet his grace is sufficient for us, amen? So she begins talking to me and telling me her story. She says, but after time, she would ask me to pray for her, and I'm saying, oh, but that's, that's good. That's a good thing. That's beautiful. And, and, and I've grown to love her. There's nothing wrong with that. Jesus loves me as a sinner, right? Amen? Jesus loves you as a sinner, amen? Is this making sense to you? Are we leading by the prefrontal cortex? Let's think about this. All right, let's think. So she began saying, I don't know how you are or what you are, but how are we supposed to make them feel when they come into church? Wait a minute. How are we supposed to make anybody feel as they come into church? With, with, without regard to any type of sin. Any sin. Sin is sin. 
You could say, I love you, but you know what? You have to stop that lifestyle, amen? I love you, and if you're still stealing, you need to stop that lifestyle. I love you if you're, you're, you're into drugs or whatever, you're going to have to stop that lifestyle. You know, we love you here. It, it's not okay. This is what the Bible says. But we still love you, and we want to help you. Amen? That's what we want to do. Because it's a, Satan's brainwashed everyone. Satan's told them, hey, yeah, that's just the way you are. Just accept it. Just love me. Love is love is love. What is that? No, 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 no. Love is love is love is not love. What are they saying? God is God is God because we know that God is love. Amen? Love is love is love. This is a worldly love. In Greek, we call that, I know it's Dominguez, but I think I'm Greek. <laughs> Um, I'm Greek and Puerto Rican. In Greek, we call that, well, in English, we call it in psychology, we call it crooked thinking. Okay? Or strabomata. Crooked thinking. You're thinking slightly off. We're made to procreate. We're made to be one in flesh. The two things that Satan wants to go after, one is the Sabbath, right? What he wrote with his own finger and people just try to chisel that out. What a shame. I, was, I used to be Greek Orthodox. That's like Catholic. I know. Two, the sanctity of marriage between a man and a woman. Amen? That's the way it is. It doesn't mean that we hate up on them. It doesn't mean that we go ahead and, and do this. I've heard some people say to me, yes, yes, we should do that. Then if we do that, we should stone them because that's what the Bible says. Like, yeah, you're right. That's what the Bible says. However, if you recall in the Bible, my Lord Jesus spoke to a particular young lady that was caught in the act of adultery. And they brought her and they said, Teacher, the law says that we have to stone her. What should we do? And by God's beautiful hand, he wrote in the dirt. He was just riding there. Jesus Christ was riding. And he stopped, and he knew what they were doing. He knew what they were thinking. He was just kept riding. And he said, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. And what happened? One by one, drop, they dropped the rock. Boom, they dropped the rock. Boom, he dropped the rock. From the eldest to the youngest. And he said, woman, where are your accusers? They've left. Then neither do I accuse you. Go and sin no more. That is the operative word that we forget as a church. If you want to stop, you must stop. Amen? Okay? That's called repentance. Repentance means turn from your ways. It means stop what you're doing. You're going down a way that's crooked. Go and sin no more, but we don't like that word, go and sin no more. We don't like that we have to, well, do whatever it is we want. You know, John, the uh, televangelist John Bradshaw from It Is Written Inside of the Best, we want what we want. That's a self issue. Self. Let's go further on and see what the Bible says. Oh, I got to hit it again. I must have done something. Haters nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, it says it right there, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Take note that the thing here I want to point out to everybody is not homosexuality is not the only thing that's in there, but there is idolat uh, idolaters. There is thieves, there's covetous, there's drunkards, there's revelers. Do you understand that sin is sin? And we don't place one sin and give one sin a carte blanche and say, okay, well, this is okay and we'll treat you different. We treat all the same. We say, this is what the Bible says. We love you. We want to help you. We want to extend ourselves out to you, but you can't do this practice. It would be like someone coming here in this church and stealing tithe, and they're kleptomaniacs, right? They're stealing, stealing. And you find out. Would you make him the treasurer? No, they have a problem. We need to help them. In fact, they'd say, you do it again, you're going to jail. Would you not? 
after you counseled him a few times or her, you would tell them, you do that again, we got you listen, you can't, this is criminal activity, you can't do this. Or the murderer. Or the adulterer that comes in and 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 and, and preys on women or a woman preying on men, because it goes both ways. Let's not just, you know, man, man's the bad guy, they're the adulterer. No, women are too. Sin does not discriminate. It's just like cancer. It goes after kids and it goes after adults. It doesn't care. Satan does not care. He needs you, Satan needs you for his army and end game. That's why he wants to destroy you. The more people he gets, I'm trying to make this as simple as possible. The more people he can amass, we could take over that city. But we know how it's going to end, amen? That's who God is. What do I have here? I have uh, 1 Timothy. But we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous person, but the lawless, the insubordinate, the ungodly, the sinners, the unholy, the profane, for murderers uh, of fathers, murderers of mothers, manslayers, for fornicators, sodomite, for kidnappers, for liars, for perjurers, and if any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. Sober-minded, sound doctrine. Which, which, how, are we leading, if we, how are we leading with our brains with this one? The prefrontal lobe, the prefrontal cortex, right? Right here. Limbic system, okay? All these emotions, we're not leading with that now. That has no room here. God calls us, hey, sober up, sober up, listen to me, I'm trying to save you so you can go home because this is all an illusion. This life that we lead is just, this, this is the lie. We're living the lie. He is the truth, and when we're in him, we live the truth, amen? Praise the Lord. You guys with me? Amen. Let's go to the next one here. Okay, this is a revelation. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But, let's look very carefully. This is end game. We went all the way from Genesis, and we're all the way where? In Revelation. This is end time, okay? But the cowardly, the unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, that lumps that whole thing I talked about, the pedophiles, all those other things, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have the, their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. You don't want to be in that one, friends. You don't want to be in the second. You want to be in the first one. If we perish, we want to wake up on that first time to see our, 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 our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen? We want to see his face. We want to see our angel helping us up out there saying, come on, let's go home. Let's go home. I'll talk to you later. Just need to go. Amen? But I don't want you to notice that it's not just people say, oh, oh, you're homophobic by preaching this. No, I'm not. Homophobia is a misnomer. You know what a misnomer is? Who knows what a misnomer is? It's an improper name. It's not, it's not the right, correct name to identify it. I'm not afraid of my brothers and sisters. Who was the originator of sin? I don't think so, Mr. Pope. I don't know what God you're worshiping, but my God doesn't do that. My God lays it out in Scripture, and what it says clearly is man and woman. Now the LGBTQ community have a plus at the end. I don't know what the plus means. It might mean extra strength. I don't know. I have no idea. But this is what the Bible says, friends. I didn't say this. The Bible's saying, I'm repeating, and I'm showing you from Scripture what the Bible says. You said... You believe what the Bible said, that it is the inspired word of God. Did you not? Okay. You said that you were Christians. You were following Christ. Did you not? We deny self. We pick up our cross daily. Humbly and walk with Jesus. Even if they get on our face and tell me, you know, tell you that they're going to drink their Coronas and when they die at 70, they, at least they live the life the way they want it to way they wanted to. How did all this stuff come in? How did we get to this point? 
it, it wasn't just now. Th those of you who were around in the 60s, my lighter colored hair friends, and in the 70s, do you all remember the 70s? Peace, love, man. It's just peace. It's who you are. She's got love. One individual's doctrine, way back from the 40s, I believe, or even yeah, around the 40s, came into fruition. And his movement went through. Okay. His movement went through 